Hello, welcome to the Thursday, June 21st, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Denver, Colorado. Fishing sites protected by TLS certificates pretty much is becoming the norm now. The latest wave I've seen was fishing for Netflix accounts. Now, Netflix accounts are certainly not that terribly valuable. I've looked around and saw them being offered for like 20 cents to 50 cents. But still, these Netflix phishing links that I received lately pretty much all led to websites that were protected protected by a TLS certificate. I guess attackers are hoping that this gives them a little bit more credibility. In this particular case, this actually worked a little bit against the attackers. Whenever you do have a TLS certificate issued by one of the major certificate authorities, the certificate is being published in certificate transparency logs, and they're pretty easy to search. There's also search stream, a tool that allows you to just see these certificates as they're being issued, as they're being added to these logs logs. So the result is that it's actually pretty easy to find these phishing sites. And it looks like someone is already taking advantage of it. I found these websites to be marked as malicious, for example, in Google's safe browsing tool very quickly. If you are running a website that is targeted by phishing, then it's certainly worthwhile to look at these logs and search for keywords that match your brand. And OpenBSD, the operating system that is known for prioritizing security in its design, has decided to turn off support for hyperthreading by default. Hyperthreading allows an operating system to run multiple processes on one physical CPU core. One physical CPU core essentially looks like multiple CPU cores with hyperthreading enabled. But what this means is that different processes with a different security contexts could use the same hardware, which then could lead to leaks from caches within that hardware. As a result, uh, OpenBSD decided to no longer support hyperthreading by default. This, of course, could come with a pretty significant performance penalty based on your workload, which is why they left a syscontrol switch uh, to enable hyperthreading if a system administrator is willing to take the risk. But this sort of follows the overall OpenBSD design philosophy to be secure by default. In a note uh, to this uh, particular announcement, uh, the author also states that the performance impact may actually be positive for some workloads. Really hard to tell, and I think you have to uh, really figure out yourself. These days, many CPUs are multi-core with multiple physical cores, so adding uh, these hyper-thread virtual cores may actually do more harm than good when it comes to performance, unless you actually have a massively parallel workload. And then we have a repeat offender when it comes to compromised cryptocurrency exchanges. Bithump was last compromised July last year, so just a little bit less than a year ago. And now again, they were compromised and about $30 million were stolen from Bithump. Now, the size of last year's breach was never really fully disclosed. Uh, Bithump is considered one of the top 10 most popular cryptocurrency exchanges. Bitcoin fell a little bit today. Not sure if that was due to uh, this breach or if that was just a normal fluctuation. And then we got a new security bug in Firefox and Microsoft Edge that allows some bypass of the same origin policy or sending cross-origin requests that are really more treated like same origin requests by the browser. The tricky part here is the fact that we are using the audio tag. Now the audio tag came up in HTML5 and when a browser downloads audio files from a website, it typically doesn't download the entire file, but instead downloads it in pieces using the range header. 
So it would be perfectly normal for a browser to first download the first few bytes of a file to figure out what type it is, what audio file format and such is used, and then as the file is being streamed, download additional pieces of it. What happens here is that if the attacker is sending back a redirect to a different site after delivering the response to the first initial range request, the browser will now send a range request to the other website, which is not supposed to be possible. You're not supposed to be able to send the range header cross origin unless you ask for permission from the receiving website. Turns out this particular a problem in Microsoft Edge because here the web audio API can then be used to receive the data and further process it. So the data coming back from the second website may be confidential data that comes back because now you you already authenticated to that website. The audio API will receive that data and can then exfiltrate it. And then we got a special out of band patch from Microsoft. Microsoft released an update for Exchange Server that patches the Oracle outside in libraries. Now you may wonder why does an Oracle patch affect Microsoft's Exchange? Well, these outside in libraries are essentially conversion libraries. They convert various document formats into each other and uh, they have been notoriously buggy with multiple security issues over the years. So Oracle just released a new version of these libraries, yet again fixing a set of vulnerabilities and Microsoft essentially is just rolling out the recent patch to its Exchange users. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.